Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so I will try to present some little bit, uh, some kind of uh, perspective on resurgence through algebraic geometry. So I recall that if you have series sum over n, uh, which is divergent, but coefficients grow like n factorial, then you make Laplace transform take sum over a n over n factorial z to power n, when z goes to 0, and it should, will be germ of analytic function uh, uh, near 0, and the mm, property of resurgence says that it has endless analytic continuation. And uh, in the talk of Jean Ecal, we heard uh, some word autarchy. And uh, isographic form, isographic form. And now the main guess. Uh, this thing means that you have a polarized exponential Hodge structure. I'll explain in a second. Of infinite rank. Yeah, so kind of like infinite dimensional algebraic geometry. And yeah, it looks that the words mean, mean, uh, have these meanings. Mm. So what is, and uh, uh, this exponential hot structure of in, uh, infinite rank, it's something if you make Laplace transform, we'll get a variation of hot structure on a fine line, maybe with infinitely many points. So it will be usual variation of hot structures of polarized pure hot structures. on C minus, in general, infinite set, maybe everywhere dense, some countable set. And you get representation of fundamental group of this to some G infinity over integers, which will be integrality of uh, this tessellations coefficients, roughly. Yeah, so uh, what is this exponential hot structure of infinite rank? Uh, it's uh, of, let's say, a finite rank, uh, because for infinite rank we don't have yet rigorous theory. Uh, Sir? You insist it's pure hot structure. Pure, yeah. No, why it's divided? Oh, mixed maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah you're right, yeah. But polar, yeah. 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 Uh, Let me recall to you what are usual hot structures. Maybe so she'll start with pure host structure, usual pure host structure. It's a, a vector space over C. Uh, with uh, uh, Hodge filtration. Something like N of V H. Uh, uh, and uh, lattice uh, uh, so you multiply not, compat uh, not compatible with filtration mm, uh, and you have a property such that if you consider uh, real involution so the lattice gives you real structure on helpers on H And uh, now consider F bar and, and F will be opposite filtrations of two shift. So we get decomposition of H into sum of HPQ. Let's say P plus Q is equal to N. And 
yeah, that's a uh, usual hot structure, which appears on cohomology of, let's say, complex projective variety. And uh, then uh, there's something called polarization, which comes from like ample bundle. You get non-degenerate uh, bilinear form uh, on integer lattice, which is symmetric or skew symmetric depending on uh, parity of weight, and such that it induces um, bilinear forms on, uh, uh, it, it induces a Hermitian, pseudo-Hermitian pseudo form on HPQ, for HP in Q, namely you, you consider uh, mm, pairing of alpha and alpha bar uh, for alpha belongings to HPQ. And this has signature minus 1 to power P. So it will be either positive or negative depending on the things. And if you take some of this appropriate sign, you get Hermitian form. So you get Hilbert space structure. P minus 1 P of this form on HPQ, it will be positive definite. It will be get, you get Hilbert space structure. Okay, that's a, that's a usual hot structure which appears on uh, cohomology of, of projective varieties. And exponential hot structures, uh, it's some notion which we introduced uh, about 10 years ago um, with Katsarkov and Pantev, uh, st studying mirror symmetry of, of, of and landau Gisberg models, it's related to exponential integrals. This are uh, uh, related to usual integrals and the definition of exponential hot structures uh, is the following. You get a, a holomorphic vector bundle on C, this coordinate, we can we denote it U. It, but it's the same as Planck constant or small parameter zeta in, in this uh, one or z in this situation. So we get this holomorphic bundle. So we get just family of uh, spaces depending on u, depending on u. And then on u plane we have special point u equal to zero, and we get a connection on this bundle holomorphic connection which has second order pole. on bundle uh, is second order pole that you equal zero. And in particular, you will have certain mm. monodromy. And uh, we assume that uh, um, flat sections of the bundle long trace sections on rays uh, grow like exponent minus some constant times u. Uh, uh, in principle, they can have more diff different singularities. It will be simplest exponential type singularities. Uh, then uh, what we get on each ray, we get filtration by order of growth. We get uh, this deline Grange filtration. Or And um, what is assumed that we have certain uh, lattice, <laughs> so the data is given, uh, the extra data is given, you have a lattice, HUZ, sitting in HU, for U non equal to zero, which is covariantly constant in respect to filtration. With, with, from an, with that uh, uh, um, connection, and all terms of filtrations are also integer uh, uh, subspaces. I defined over O Z. Ah, so it will be analog of hot structure. Uh, actually, the usual hot structure is particular case when 
Uh, this is uh, not a second order pole, but first order pole in the monorome is uh, plus minus one. In terms of the is are defined over Z, yeah. Yeah, so that's analog of uh, uh, hot structure and polarization is, is the following, given by the following data, you get a, uh, for u non equal to zero, you get a, a non-degenerate pairing. It opposite uh, si um, sides of filtration, which is um, covariantly constant, and um, and also compatible with uh, uh, on in integer lattice on H U Z. is integer valued. Mm, and uh, then there is a way to formulate property of poly like sign of polarization, which eventually gives you uh, some Hilbert space structure on HU. And also uh, 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 from this synchron, I can deduce certain filtrations on this HU without Z, uh, labeled not, on not only by integers, but maybe some fractional numbers. Yeah. yeah, so that's its abstract story in where it appears. Appears in exponential intervals. So here H is finite dimensional. Or yeah, here it will be finite dimensional. And what I want to say is that uh, pass intervals, one can see at least some pass intervals, one can see as infinite dimensional uh, examples of this. Appears in exponential integrals. Namely, imagine that x, uh, the following situation. Suppose x is uh, a final break variety. Let's, one can think about just coordinate space. And suppose we have some polynomial, some function. And uh, I'll just give you the simplest possible example. Assume that this polynomial has isolated points, isolated critical points. And there is some condition, uh, I forgot what is the name, it says that something this polynomial has no critical points at infinity. Tame, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so suppose we have this polynomial, uh, what will be this h of u? Mm. We consider space of algebraic n forms on x <coughs> and mod out by to see the quotient space by uh, the image d minus u d plus multiplication by d s applied to n minus one forms. It will be finite dimensional space and the, uh, and the dimension of this h u will be number of uh, critical points. Mm, so you get a vector bundle. Uh, 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 now I want to say what is the lattice for u not equal to zero, the lattice, it will be homology of the following set. You consider x and consider pre-image of the domain when real part divide 1 over us, this also function, and we take pre-image of the domain when the real part of very, very big, and take mm, mm, commodity with integer coefficients. So the dual space, or dual lattice, uh, can be sorted uh, can be sorted certain cycles, uh, cycles over which uh, real part of S divided by U goes to plus infinity. And now what we can do, we, if you have, uh, you have a pairing, 
between HFU and such cycles. Now we can integrate over such cycle of of the of the following of the function integrate s minus u and times some uh, algebraic n form representing class in class in, in this uh, cohomology. So this integral will convergent. And uh, this integral gives you a family of lattices, which gives you, uh, it's, it will be, uh, uh, say it's covariantly constant, it gives you a certain formula of what is connection, it has second order pole. But uh, the main story is that this guy has uh, definition when u equal to zero as well. And it's uh, like analog of Hodge filtration. Uh, what is the pairing? I, I, I want to describe the pairing on kind of, um, mm, mm, the pairing is also completely natural in this situation. Uh, I will describe pairing on level of homology and we're going to go to dual, get pairing on level of homology. Uh, namely, let's assume that argument of uh, u is generic. Then we get the basis of HUZ dual consists of what's called Lefschetz timbles. Namely, what you do, you have critical values of our polynomial. Now we draw straight paths uh, along which uh, uh, this uh, S over U will, uh, will uh, minus some constants will be real and goes to plus infinity. So we get the straight pass, and over the straight pass, uh, uh, in ambient manifold, we draw a family of, s of um, uh, nearby, we have kind of vanishing uh, uh, cycle, some small sphere, S minus one dimensional sphere, and we get family of, and then conti one continuously extends this family of S minus one dimensional sphere, we get a copy of Rn embedded in our space. Uh, and the bending depends on, uh, on these critical points. So there are critical, f x alpha will be critical points. And then you get uh, uh, s of x alpha. And for each critical point, you get this left shift symbol, so you get convergent integral. Uh, uh, so you get this convergent integral and then if you change direction, uh, argument of your u goes to minus u, you just get a left uh, a dual cycle go going to the opposite direction. I claim it is to, and it's easy to see that it's kind of currently constant and you get duality between, it's just Poincare pairing between homology in fiber u and fiber minus u. Okay, yeah, so that's a um, kind of scientific way to formulate this integral over left shift symbols. And here's the whole story one can mm, reformulate in kind of more elementary ways, namely for each alpha and in generic argument of u. Uh, so we can write what is the integral of a, a left shift symbol. It will be integral, uh, we choose again some expression. Um, we integrate uh, over this left shift symbol, starting at point x alpha. Uh, we integrate some n form, which you write something like, like polynomial function of x multiplied by some reference. Uh, or form which we can write dnx, yeah, and f will be some polynomial function. So we get this integral to calculate, and then when uh, u goes to zero along the ray, we have a symptotic expansion. It will be exponent of my critical value, s of x alpha divided by u, 
Then we multiply by square root of 2 pi h bar, uh, 2 pi h bar to the dimension over 2, uh, to, or 2 pi u, sorry, uh, uh, to dimension over 2. Then we divide by uh, determinant of second derivative at point x alpha for quadratic approximation series, and then start with series uh, starting from f of u x alpha plus, so you get certain series in form of power series in u. Will be value of this function at this point, and then we get extra correction. And this series is uh, has factorial growth. And maybe the series I denote by, uh, uh, it's a series which has factorial growth, but it's actually equal to certain uh, uh, number, uh, which I kind of denote by square root of determinant, yeah? There you are. So, so yeah, you're right. And this I denote by something like g alpha of u. It's it's now now it's actual function which has asymptotic expansion. I remove all irrelevant terms. get just a bunch of, uh, of functions, g alpha of u, uh, alpha no, for one to number of critical points, which uh, uh, have uh, defined outside of, of some Stokes race when uh, direction uh, race, and which have uh, but uh, these functions have the same asymptotic expansion, which do not, doesn't depend on direction. Well, formal expansion is the same. Stokes, Stokes, formal expansion doesn't depend on the sector. Ah, so you get just bunch of formal power series which you can calculate uh, 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 on computer using only formal expansion at this point, but you get actual actual functions as well. And when you divide the integral by that, you get functions. Yeah, you get actual functions, yeah. And uh, this uh, function satisfies kind of jump property. Jump, if you go through some ray where argument uh, ray, uh, when it says it argument of u, is equal to argument of difference between two critical values, yeah? Oh, so it's a self for one minus a self for two, say. Mm. Uh, when you get this array, then mm. uh, what we see, mm, it's kind of standard picture. Uh, what happens if you, on the one side of the array, uh, uh, when uh, uh, and if you on one side of the ray, and th then we get uh, a rotation, we get uh, uh, slightly different homology classes. And you see that one homology class doesn't change, so, so one function uh, stays uh, analytic. G alpha 2 is analytic, so jump along the ray of g alpha 2 is 0, and jump of g alpha 1 is a certain multiple, integer multiple of uh, um, mm, some integer in alpha 1, alpha 2 multiplied by g alpha uh, 1, alpha 2. 
But because of this factor, we multiply by exponentially small term. We take exponent s of uh, minus s of x alpha 2 minus s of s alpha 1 divided by h bar, which is very, very small. Again, it has no exponentially small. So it has trivial Taylor expansion. Sorry? Ah, yeah, sorry, yeah, because I kind of <laughs> mix notation I have in mind this h bar and u is for the same, but uh, eventually. Maxim, what is the operator? <laughs> Delta, it's jump. Oh, okay. A kind of jump of, uh, I have function defined on two sides on array, you can see the difference, I think, yeah. Yeah, so get, um, it's equivalent, uh, yeah, so it's kind of in completely elementary mathematical terms, all this hot structure, besides this positivity process of polarizations, it's very elementary object. The polarization itself, it's kind of tricky stuff, it's called TT star equations, and we will not talk about uh, this thing at all. Okay, yeah, so we get this completely clear picture in uh, finite dimensions. Now go to I infinite dimensions. Yeah, suppose I have a certain remaining manifold, maybe two points of this remaining manifold, and my uh, and I assume that manif manifold is can be complexified to some complex manifold. Maybe kind of algebraic manifold, and metric will be algebraic tensor on this manifold. Oh, so get this big mm, complex manifold. Now and M is real. Okay. Uh, uh, as example, you can try to think like M is a sphere or uh, some, something when you could write explicitly formulas. <coughs> sphere or ellipsoid or, or hyperbolic space. Maybe flat space even, yeah. Torus or something. It's a very nice concrete formula. Now uh, this uh, then we have infinite dimensional complex manifold X, which will be the definition space of um, mm, mm, path connecting, connecting these two points M0 and 1. Maps phi from 0, 1 to MC. F of 0 is M0, F of 1 is M1. Uh, it's infinite dimensional complex manifold. It's, it contains uh, uh, kind of half in infinite dimensional sink path sitting in real path, uh, in real locus. And to the same boundary condition. Uh, and now oh, the Feynman integral, which we can consider it's, uh, the, the action functional will be one half of integral from zero to one, d phi, let's say dt squared dt. Yeah, so you get uh, mm. this uh, functional integral. And now when we integrate over xr, exponent of s of divided, let's say, by u, but now maybe I denote it by Planck constant. Uh, uh, and uh, defies uh, what 
of expression means in, in path integral. So it's analog of this uh, 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 situation. of finite dimensional exponential integral. Uh, and all this, uh, so it should have some kind of critical points, form a power series expansion, and then actual functions and this, all this uh, 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 geometry. Let me uh, explain you kind of basic <coughs> trick here. So we integrate uh, uh, how to calculate this integral. When h bar is equal to one, uh, so I have just uh, uh, so I get this usual uh, Wiener measure. Uh, uh, it will be it will be Brownian motion on your manifold, and you start from point uh, m, m zero and it's point m one in time one, and that should be like uh, should be equal by he, uh, value of heat kernel. Exponent minus maybe one half of Laplacian on x real, and you uh, use physics notations. So consider heat kernel for time one between points zero and one, m zero m m one. And what to do for general h bar? The idea is it's very simple. So we see you multiply the thing divide by one over h bar. I skip one half. Yeah, so you get this uh, uh, six, and you see that it's in time, uh, this thing is homogeneous of degree minus one. So we, one says that it's uh, put it uh, time bar is equal to ht. So tau bar will belongs to interval of zero h bar. We will identify 10 points. And then it will be equal to just equal df over dt bar square dt bar. Yeah, so you see that uh, this integral is equal to exponent to the heat kernel for small time to h bar. Yeah, okay. Ah, so you get uh, this nice formula. So it will be heat kernel, but for small time. Yeah. So the pr the prediction is the following: if you consider um, heat kernel for small time and divide by this leading term, you get some asymptotic expansion. Then it should be resurgent series. Uh, this should be resurgent series, and uh, uh, now. Uh, Uh, yeah, so it should have some exponential small term, so we should divide by exponent minus uh, uh, mm, mm, I think one over h bar times something like square of length distance between those points. Uh, it will be uh, li leading uh, growth of expansion should 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 be kind of like series in h bar, and this should be resurgent. Ah. Uh, that's uh, actually uh, uh, 
uh, completely open question. Uh, for general, like C infinity uh, remaining manifold, we really don't know. With this guy is uh, uh, resurgence, and I think it's true only for some special like algebraic varieties, so things close to them. Mm, so let me. So this example, which I found extremely striking, is this is example when consider this manifold will be manifold will be hyperbolic plane. Yeah, the, yeah, that's may, maybe the simplest example which could be, because in this case we have just only one geodesic uh, between two points. And uh, from some classical formula for the heat kernel, uh, one can express uh, that this M0 exponent minus Laplacian and half of Laplacian 1, uh, and you multiply by h bar, is equal to the following think it's certain constant yeah, get something I think and then we get certain integral it will be s small s not capital s but it's r related to the critical values of my function formula where L is distance between my two points. It's a um, no negative real number. Ah, so the sink is given by uh, certain integral and uh, what here goes on? You can see the critical values of C on, on space of compressive height pass. Pass, I, pass in uh, complexified hyperbolic plane. And consider what are critical values. The critical values are the following. You get certain uh, points on a parabola, integer points in the parabola, and the points on parabola, so you can see, you get a bunch of uh, left shift symbols, and, uh, and this, uh, this is my integral of the certain left shift symbols, and in fact, uh, if you look on this integral, you'll get certain finite dimensional, mm. uh, actually, um, you say that you, are you identify up to the simple factors in the front, you identify your infinite dimensional integral with finite dimensional integral, but over Riemannian surface, which is infinite genus Riemannian surface, uh, ramified at this countable set of critical values. You, you can see this function of small s, this one of square root of cos uh, hyperbolic cosine minus hyperbolic cosine. It's something which uh, is too valued. Uh, if if it's on a sphere, you'll have closed close geodesic. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, the, uh, and the idea is the sphere. On a sphere, if you have two points, you have not only one geodesic, but you go around, around, around. So it means that the two lengths you add, uh, this length of, um, of the uh, periodic geodesic, which is purely, purely imaginary, you get some, you get some kind of like length plus all these points have the following meaning. You consider this length plus 2 pi i n, where n is an integer. One is real and the other one are just adding the yeah. in this sphere. Yeah, but, but of imaginary of radius, 
I? So the critical value should be. Yeah, all the, all these points is a set of such of uh, is a set of all these uh, uh, points which I consider. And so you see, you see, you get kind of uh, this integer points on a parabola. And uh, moreover, it it has uh, this example. I think is already very interesting because mm, from the answer you can see you have a prediction how many. Uh, you have prediction um, how this function jumps when you uh, rotate zeta. So this no integer numbers n alpha 1, alpha 2 for each two critical points. Uh, and those are very simple numbers to calculate and for this uh, interval, uh, kind of z z plus minus 1. And the claim that should be coincide with uh, something very Interesting uh, because if you look what is an alpha one alpha two in general situation, it's some kind of number of certain gradient lines from one critical point to another, and gradient lines will be gradient lines in the space of pass. So it means that you should solve certain pass in the space of pass. It's a map from surface, and so it so, so means that gradient lines it will be number of certain surfaces satisfying certain kind of Cauchy-Riemann equation. Uh, in compressifying space, yes, yeah. So it, it's kind of, kind of very non-trivial prediction that from this answer we can see that everything everything fits together and um, mm, uh, we get kind of convergent uh, <coughs> answer only if you know this number of paths from power from power series, uh, and uh, this will be given by this picture. Now, so that's. Uh, uh, main example, uh, non-trivial example, which I have to uh, tell you, it's about this heat kernel on hyperbolic space. Uh, mm. One can ask uh, similar Similar stuff. What uh, in small modification? Uh, uh, I can study the case of sphere, but. For example, if uh, more interesting case will be case of ellipsoid uh, with non-equal axis in R, R, in R3, see? Yeah, yeah, M, M. Uh, M, M, yeah, sorry, MR, yeah. It's, el it's ellipsoid, uh, actually of any dimension. Uh, uh, why ellipsoids are nice? For ellipsoids, when, uh, uh, this uh, geodesic flow is integrable. So one can write lengths of geodesics through some uh, theta functions, but also uh, eigenvalues of Laplacians also kind of known. It's uh, because it belongs to family of commuting operators. Uh, for example, one can do kind of really extreme case when ellipsoid became a flat, it will be kind of like double of disk. Imagine disk glued to itself along the boundary. Uh, then uh, then geodesics will be uh, uh, this uh, polygons labeled by pair of integers. So it will be a length of geodesics. If one calculate like close things, it will be whatever q times two cosine two pi p o q, something like this. Uh, or, yeah. And eigenvalues of Laplacian will be uh, because we decompose by um, will be zeros of some basal functions. Yeah, so in this case, there uh, will be certain uh, uh, great identities, certain infinite sum has an analytic continuation uh, along this series of basic functions that will be interesting to calculate all data explicitly in this case. Yeah, yeah so here was what was the trick? This action for this uh, free particle 
uh, was homogeneous in time degree minus 1, because of df over dt squared times dt, it will be homogeneous of degree minus 1. And then we it means that we can make this recalculation. Uh, one can do, uh, make kind of similar exercise. Uh, it's related to very old work by Andrea Voros. Uh, so consider operator Consider uh, another example. Consider such uh, uh, instead of Laplacian, consider uh, second derivative plus plus potential. And the whole story, is, the main thing is, it should be also homogeneous function. Uh, like uh, one can generalize to many variables. I just start with one variable. Uh, so we have this homogeneous function, and when you calculate trace of uh, exponent minus lambda at h bar, uh, how to calculate it? Mm. Mm. Again, by feynman katz formula, it will be integral of the space of pass uh, with periodic boundary condition uh, to r1 with coordinate x. I have the separator, and I multiply by exponent minus action, you denote by s lambda of phi, d phi. Uh, s lambda of phi is uh, just integral of 0 to 1, 1 half d phi, phi of dt squared, that's phi to power to n, times dt. Yeah, it's a discrete spectrum or continuous spectrum? It's a discrete spectrum because uh, uh, the spectrum is discrete because its uh, uh, potential goes to plus infinity. It's, it has a well. Oh, S, ah, sorry, you're right. To a lambda, yeah. yeah. And now I try to rewrite as the integral from 0 to 1. I want to rescale uh, time and rescale everything. Uh, uh, time and phi. Uh, to make it integral from uh, 0 to 1, namely I take now tau lambda is uh, lambda 1 minus t, and then when rate phi uh, uh, lambda is equal to uh, uh, if we make it a scaling then s lambda will be integral of 0 to 1 uh, when I go to tilde variables, multiply by uh, lambda to a certain power, which is uh, you get, uh, yeah, just homogeneity game, nothing. Nothing tricky here, and and then the uh, the conclusion will be the following. Then, if you take consider trace uh, function, uh, whatever zeta goes to trace exponent minus zeta h to power to n over n plus one, should admit a uh, endless analytic continuation. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, that's what Andre Voros uh, predicted, but uh, as far as it's not on the level of pass integral, yeah, so it's, it's a bit simple uh, uh, homogeneity gram with uh, 
um, pass integrals. Uh, uh, yeah, so there are mm, uh, there's two two basic uh, examples when it's very very concrete. Uh, Yeah, so it was a case of uh, free particle and also with homogeneous potential. Uh, there is uh, still another uh, example. So suppose we get, uh, use the same name, but now uh, mm One can write uh, uh, another pass integral, uh, very badly defined. Suppose it has my I have a complex manifold, or, uh, like a tangent bundle, or more generally, holomorphic symplectic manifold. Which contains two complex Lagrangian Submanifolds and zero L one, and uh, what I want to write, I want to int integrate mm. the space X C will be will be no real space at all here. It will be just on my infinite dimensional complex manifold. It will be space of pass. that f of 0 belongs to L0, f of 1 belongs to L1, and mm, it's back to tangent bundle. And as an action, I choose mc, mc, sorry, mc, all right. I have this infinite dimensional space. Uh, the action functional, which I consider here, it will be is defined only up to a constant and only locally. So I just have to write what is the differential of these things. It's, it will be holomorphic one form, which will be integral of two form uh, of, of my pass. Uh, when I have one parameter family of pass, I get surface and I integrate it. Well defined thing, yeah. So, uh, so roughly think it's uh, like in mechanics you write something like these things plus boundary terms. Uh, first, it's it's called first order formalism, and uh, uh, plus boundary terms. Yeah, yeah. In principle, one can in uh, in in I include this uh, 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 random walk, adding certain terms like you add certain function, it depends on three parameters. So it will be a function on cotangent bundle M times some time variable QC, that's the function H. You can add this such term, and if the thing is quadratic in P, uh, this is uh, well known as equivalent to pass integral one can integrate over p variable and you get mm. Mm, uh, exactly uh, mm, random walk. But now I, I, I ignore these things completely. So it thinks it's completely geometric. I have this integral of one form. So the question what is it and um, what we'll have here? Yeah, in uh, in general, it's, uh, it's pretty unclear. You mean how to interpret? How interpret it? What is the integral? Yeah, it's uh, uh, and what resurgence property of what we should expect from this integral? Uh, 
uh, it, but at least it looks at an, uh, for certain kind of mm, mm, class of example, uh, uh, it this could be the following. Suppose L0, get some L0, city concatangent bundle, here draw fibers of my cotangent bundle, and it will be like this, this L0, and L1, will be cotangent far by a certain point. Mm. Then I get finitely many intersection points. Uh, and uh, kind of the guess is, is if L0 kind of corresponds like spectral curve, again, it's a long story how to identify parameters to, to uh, algebraic uh, bundle with a connection. Uh, then uh, uh, this This asymptotic series, which you should get here, you should should be like WKB series for formal solutions of the models. Which write like uh, you, you write L zero. It's graph of differential graph of d maybe called uh, f zero, some multivalued function, and then it will be. Uh, things like you write a solution uh, as, as, uh, you, you remove this uh, main term and you get asymptotic series in each bar. Now, so, uh, so that's something which with Jan we kind of part of general product we have with Jan on wall crossing. And what is going on? He had some kind of uh, really interesting effect here right to the following story. Uh, on the space of pass, we don't have really one valued function. We get functions uh, defined up to constant, we have a closed one form. Um, uh, and that means the following. We can, uh, in the whole integral, we can go to universal cover. And then, uh, um, and then we go down, we can twist this arbitrary uh, rank one local system on the space of pass. So you get certain torus as you start to kind of of first beta numbers of the space of pass. And uh, by which you can mm, mm, uh, twist your integral. Uh, yeah, for example, if you, uh, the same situation can be in, in finite dimensional story, you consider you can twist your uh, con uh, con ex irregular connection by, uh, by uh, rank one local system. Consider again homology of pair and so on. So you get uh, things depending on, on a point on a torus. And mm, what, what happens in infinite dimensional? There are certain uh, direction of Planck constant uh, from, from which you change parameterization space. Of you kind of uh, apply nonlinear automorphism of the torus. Uh, so you get uh, uh, things which kind of very close to kind of a Calvaronian uh, picture. You have some nonlinear changes along the rays. You get it's kind of new infinite dimensional effect. Uh, there are kind of new walls, new, new rays. Uh, Said so that we're going through this. You kind of apply diffeomorphism, analytic diffeomorphism of torus of maybe some domain of torus depending on small parameter. Yeah, so you get a, a more involved picture with some kind of nonlinear changes as well. Uh, so be before we had just vector bundle with basis and transformational grace, but now you have vector bundle on the torus and parameterization. Uh, so that should be some vector bundle of rings, which is sort of small. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yeah, but eventually it should give uh, again uh, the same re resurgent properties uh, uh, of the whole uh, story. Okay, so yeah, so I didn't had a time. Uh, yeah, that's essentially all one-dimensional examples, and in principle, uh, and what is completely untouched, one can try to make uh, guess uh, imitate this uh, at least equation for uh, two-dimensional series like with the witten or three-dimensional with Sharon Simons. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so again, one get actual values of integrals from physics, and then uh, with the same picture predicts your resurgence structure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. It's a, a question slash remark. So you consider this free particle yeah. on a hyperbolic sp space. You can yeah. think of it on circle, sphere, or any varieties here. Yeah. Uh, so the, for the general case, so general Lie groups, there is a formula called Duis Thermotechman, yeah. which essentially rewrite this as a sum over geodesics on these spaces. But as far as I remember. No, no, th no, this is certain, f no, there was certain sub by this term to happen for any remaining manifold. If you consider a uh, trace of expo, uh, yeah, there was some tr uh, trace of exponent minus et, out of square root of Laplacian, right. it has singularities when on imaginary axis equal to length of geodesics, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. yeah. So, but, for example, if I just consider particle on a circle, again, I can write a sum over geodesics. Yes, yes. There aren't, there are, there aren't uh, fluctuations around them. Yes, yes, you got uh, exact, exact formula, yeah. It's the exact formula. Yes, exactly. Okay. So like C to, you got C to function, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay, so the, the, there is no asymptotic expansion. Yes, it's trivial. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, in this yeah. case, it's trivial, yeah. Okay, and in these general cases where this Duis Thurman Tekman applies, yeah. it's also the same structure, right? No, but this, the, the conjecture is for more or less general remaining manifold with algebraic metric. Then you get very complicated expansions. Yeah, it's, if it's not, if it's not, if it's not homogeneous, yeah. Can, can you describe the Hodge structure of infinite rank in terms of this action functional relative to homology? Yeah, no, there is kind of abstract one can write this convolution of pair, but what is it? it but uh, you see this, this number of uh, this gradient lines, integer numbers in alpha 1 of 2, gives you at the end of the day uh, kind of step-by-step -step construction of this infinite. Uh, it should be space generated by all geodesics. Yeah. I think it should be pure in this case. Yeah. More questions? Yeah, I would like to, I didn't understand everything obviously, but um, how far are we, uh, or you, from um, effective uh, computation on a Feynman path integral for, say, a non-homogeneous problem? Uh, yeah, for general potential, I think yeah. it's, uh, for general potential, yeah, in principle, it looks that uh, if, it's, if it's not homogeneous, this gives you uh, kind of few steps procedure which is completely uh, mechanical. One can calculate uh, critical points in complex domain. Uh, then one should count how many gradient lines. It's a number of solution of certain uh, 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 like pseudo-holomorphic disks somewhere. Or, uh, it's some integer numbers which one can calculate. And then you get form power series which you do f at each point. And then after that, it should produce a actual numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Can you replace it by solving Riemann Hilbert? Yeah, yeah, because it should, so, uh, yeah, the story is the following. This integers n, n alpha, uh, n, uh, so the jump formulas for j, which depends only on critical values and integer numbers. So it gives you a way to glue certain um, uh, holomorphic vector bundle with, with trivialized infinity st uh, structured uh, zero, and then this form power series after you uh, solve Hiram's whole person, it'll be convergence series, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. So it's completely general procedures. That's from this perspective, it will be. It's effective. It's effective, yeah. It will get to actual number, yeah. Uh, it will get a convergent. Uh, 
is it clear that if you write for it's, it's, it's for Hamiltonian, if you write the form of WKB solution, such as in the classical form, yeah. or is the same as you get uh, Feynman integral diagonal expansion? Yeah. So, so is, is, it, is it clear? Or is it clear? Uh, no, 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 it's not clear. Comment on your question? Yeah. So from the Feynman integral point of view, that's very difficult, but if you do Van der Waal type analysis, yeah. you can actually computerize. Yeah, you can, yeah, because you, you substitute the things to, to your expansion, you get yeah, to... It's purely computational It's purely computational thing. things, yeah, it's a computer will calculate yes. for things, and then you get... Even the determinant part is not computer free, though. Yeah. So, by infinite dimension, is that... Yeah, no, but, but, no, but there's also, no, there are many things here. For example, here, those dimension, yeah? Yes. It will be zeta function regularization tensor. This will be zeta prime of zero, yeah, of Laplace, yeah, so it will be... In field theory, all terms make sense, yeah. Okay.